Starcase monthly webinar. We're here at the Starke offices in Baltimore, Maryland. And uh, my name is Rabbi Tzvi Goldberg, and we're back with Rabbi David Heber. Good afternoon. Uh, this, these webinars are held the last Wednesday of every month. So uh, notwithstanding the fact that this is a day that many people are off in the United States, um, Starke is still at work, and uh, we're, we're pleased to bring you the uh, the regular webinar. Uh, the contact information, if you're joining us on the internet, it's learnkosher.clickwebinar.com forward slash kosher, and that will get you signed in. If you want to join us by phone, the number is 218-895-1203. Again, 218 218- 895-1203 and the passcode is 2020 pound. Uh, we do have the ability to have you chat with us and we like to, to hear from our listeners. So on the bottom of your screen, you'll see a chat. Uh, you can uh, ask us questions or if you have a problem, our tech our technician will hopefully be able to help you out. Next month, we have our regular webinar at the end of the month and then in Feb end of February, we will have a, uh, a special edition of this webinar with uh, uh, Rabbi Tendler on bug checking. How to check your in your how to check your insects for bugs? No, how to check your vegetables for uh, for 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 bugs uh, with some videos and uh, uh, back and forth, and it should be a, a really a worthwhile uh, endeavor. Today we're going to speak about Healthcare, because that's on everybody's minds. With Obamacare, uh, I think the last day to sign up was yesterday. <laughs> but uh, but these issues are year-round for 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 uh, for uh, Orthodox patients, uh, medicines, health issues, Shabbos, and so we thought it was a timely issue to discuss at, at this at this uh, time. Uh, if you could just give us by a, a few people could chat in to let us know that you can hear us. Uh, that would be really, really helpful because sometimes there are some uh, glitches with the, uh, that's a good word to use in a, in a, in a, in a healthcare uh, environment. There are glitches with the system, so if you can chat and let us know if you can hear us, thank you very, thank you very much. Okay, the sound is good. We do want to recognize, Rabbi Heber, that we have, um, we have people attending here from all over. We have, we have mostly. See, we can see. I, I don't know who's who's who, but we can see sort of where people are coming from. We have a number of people in uh, in Eretz Yisrael, so it's great. And uh, of course, on the East Coast, They're probably post Marv in Eretz Yisrael. After Marv. After Marv, yeah. Okay. Sure. Seven seven o'clock. Seven o five. Yeah. And then on on, on the the uh, Ramat Chemish. There we go. Okay, some people in Ohio. We have uh, some in California, looks like. Somewhere on the West Coast, looks Arizona. like. Arizona. Arizona? Does it tell you that? Where is that? I saw one of the names. Oh, oh I see. Okay. All right. And Joe Barry from Maine. He's one, one of our regulars there and up in uh, okay. Maine. And uh, so from all over the world, sometimes we have from uh, Europe also. We're very pleased to, uh, that you could join with us today. Okay, so the first, the first topic... And again, if you have any particular questions, what's that, Reverend? Dallas, Seattle. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, the first topic that we have, uh, we're going to discuss is uh, generic medications, or is there any difference in kosher, kosher between the generics and the regular medications? Let's get okay. into that topic. Right. I mean, bit. technically, the uh, regular medicine, um, there's a little bit of misconception. Sometimes I'll get a call saying, you know, I I bought the generic of this product. Is it okay? And I'll step back and say, how do you know that the regular one is okay? Meaning, right. just because something's a name brand doesn't necessarily mean it's kosher. The really the difference between a name brand and and a um, a generic is going to be sometimes the ability to determine uh, the ingredients a little bit quicker because name brands are, are more out there, a little bit easier to access the, to to access the information about it, which allows us to draw conclusions quicker. 
But as far as the actual content, you could really have uh, a kosher generic, kosher regular, non-kosher generic, non-kosher regular. So with that said, if a person does have, I mean, let's just step back for a second. Yes. Someone who's a chayla, sheish b'sakana, their life is in danger, or their chayla she'en b'sakana, their life is not in danger, uh, it, um, is allowed to swallow any tablet, you know, without without question if, if something, you know, not only allowed, but, not available. But, but required. They're required. Well, by chayla sheish b'sakana, certainly, but even if their life is not in danger, they can swallow anything. Um, so that now, if if somebody has a generic, if they, if, if let's say they know they're allowed to take, the, let's let's say they're not a chayla, let's say they're just have a mechush, which means a discomfort. Okay. So then this question gets a little bit questionable. Or let's say something is is taken, it's chewable, and it tastes good. So now that really needs to, let's say someone's a sakana, you really need to determine that the product is kosher. If you're taking something that tastes good, unless you're a sakana, you really need to confirm that this product is a kosher okay. product. So let's say you happen to know that the name brand is kosher. It doesn't tell you anything right. about it. It doesn't generic. tell you they're generic because what happens is the, the product is identical, means the active ingredient mm-hmm. is identical. In other words, you take something like acetaminophen, the, the famous brand name, that would be Tylenol. Um, but the generics are the same as acetaminophen, but the inactives might be an array of different items, also known as excipients, a little different. An inactive is any non medicinal product. Excipient? How do you excipient, spell that? Excipient is uh, E X uh, C I. P I E N T. So that does, those are the things. The recipients are the side ingredients to it. which are necessary right. for the medicine, like it helps break it down and so on. Those are usually the majority of the, of the pill, right? Correct. They usually could be 95 percent, 96 percent. So the uh, the actual active ingredient is very small, a small Correct. amount. Correct. So now you want to make sure, especially if it tastes good, you want to make sure the excipients are kosher. Um, so you look at you look at the ingredients. I mean, you have a way of looking up on on the on the uh, the brand names, even right. non-brand names, actually it's sold in America. Um, and can you give out that secret? Is, How yeah, do you find a, out? If you the go to the NIH, it is an NIH, NIH. If you type in, the, if you if you Google search the name of the medicine and the generic company that makes it, and you type in the letters NIH afterwards, the NIH has a website that will will show you all of the ingredients. Because very interesting, because federal law requires. That before you sell a, an active drug on the market, you need to run it by the, the you know, federal government. Right. So unlike if you bake a cookie and you sold it, you, obviously you're limited in certain laws, but you don't have to run the recipe uh, by anybody uh, in such a case. But but if you're making a drug, you need to run it by, and it's a complicated process. You register, validate it. It's a whole, it's a long, obviously for the protection of uh, of, of consumers. So they actually post the labels. NIH is products. the National Institute of Health? Correct. Okay. And they, they, there are some subgroup, but I know it works on the NIH. They actually, um, they have every label of every product and, and that needs to be approved. So even though, even though it's not on, in other words, the problem is when you get a a, 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 a prescribed medication, the ingredients are not correct. On, not the on the label. label but so by putting in, so let's say, so we, we Google the name of the, 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 name the, of the product, the name of the company that makes it, and right. the letters NIH. NIH. And that will tell me. There what, might be a faster way, by the way. You go straight to the website and put it, but this it is the way I do it. It gets you to the NIH website, which has, all, which has all the information. Correct. And, and and that product, you will then get a lengthy explanation of that product, including its ingredients. And a I copy see. of the picture. Also. Mm-hmm. And you can see exactly. And that actually, it's a huge help. We, we used to use the PDR. Um, uh, e. Jacob says it's National, national Institute of oh, Health, okay. not Institute. Okay. We stand, it's we stand like correctly. daylight saving daylight time, savings. not savings. No, people say savings. It's daylight saving. Right. So I guess they took the S. It's like Lahabdal, <laughs> like Akvavinu, no, Lahabdal. So the daylight savings took the National Institute of Health. Uh, they took S. the S, right. They took the S. Maybe they got it from Harry S. Truman. Maybe it had something to do with that also. Anyway, all kidding aside, um, Lamaisa, you can look up those ingredients. It's very helpful. Pesach time. I use it in the office here all the time. Just it's, it's we used to have a CD or something or book. We started with right? a book, right? The PDR. Yeah, this is, that's right, but but that only had name brands. The name brands. Then we went to a CD they, or they something. They had a generic book, but it was, and now it's all now at, it's at the NIH. What, what so so what are some of the ingredients that uh, that that we're looking at? You know, can okay. you give people like a, a? I know in one of the articles you have a list of. The problematic ingredients that are, that are the most pro- common problematic ingredients in medicines are in the in the excipients include um, 
as follows. You have the, in the liquid. Yeah. I know you know about right. it. Anyway. <laughs> uh, I don't remember this article. Okay. Yeah, this is um, if you go to our website. Um, if you go to our website, let me see if I still have the uh, that particular. I, I I was looking at it before, Rabbi Um Yeah, if you go if you go to this site, okay, yeah, right. That. I'm going to put this up on on the screen if I can. The whole medicine article. Yeah, this is the medicine article. Oh, this explains the list. Okay, this is not part of the. I got it. I, I that, explains, that, 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 that explains that 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 explains how the list works. Explains right. how the list that I just linked to how it works. Um, okay. So anyway, why why you're working on that? Indeed, there are there are certain medicines, there are certain ingredients that are um, prob potentially problematic. The most common include polysorbate, polysorbate 80 which is very common, um, and triacetin. Triacetin. A lot of those are used in the coatings, um, mm -hmm. and, and they're really not bottle either in the coating. The coating is a distinct material. And then could be trafe, they could be kosher. You have acetylated monoglycerides or stamol monoglycerides. Um, those are, uh, glycerin is a very common in liquid medications. Mm -hmm. Glycerin could be made from petroleum, which would be kosher. It could be made from vegetable sources, namely coconut, which, is, which would also be kosher. And it would come from if from animal, the Procter Gamble, for example, in their ivory soap manufacturing facility in Ivory Dale, they as a the, as the byproduct, so to speak, of the soap is glycerin. So you, that's trafe that's coming off of uh, mm -hmm. you know of chazer, you know pork. Uh, so so again, glycerin can be trafe because it's kosher. That causes an issue when it comes to liquid medications. Mm -hmm. um, so there are ways around it. You look in the article if you have a liquid medication with glycerin. We recommend being mevatel it every teaspoon in two ounces of juice, water, and soda. That's a one to 12 ratio, five milliliters in 60 milliliters. And by doing that, you're taking questionable glycerin and you're making a bottle of shisha. Even right. though normally you can't be mevatel, but here, um, here it's a mm -hmm. suffix iser. It's a questionable iser. It's questionably prohibited. So then Allah is, um, the Allah is, it's, 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 it's mutter. You're allowed to do that. Now, two ingredients that are common in medicines, which we don't typically have a problem with, one would be um, stearates, magnesium stearate, calcium stearate. Mm -hmm. Those are typically bottled in the product. Those are used as a flowing agent. When they make pills, the powders would get clumped in the equipment. So to help the process move a little bit smoother, they add this. Um, and also, so, so we don't have a problem so with that. So if you see stearates in, in the... Uh... In the ingredients, you should not worry about that. Correct. You will almost always see either stearic acid, magnesium stearate, calcium right. stearate. You could assume it's bottle. Stearic acid is a little trickier in its number, but just but Allah, I spoke to Ravidman, the the um, bit of administrators of Machsher, Star K, and we don't have a problem. Uh, you know when you see that in there, flavors are also we we in a medicine one could assume that it's kosher or bottle, and and it's not a problem. I'm just going to copy this list there, Rabbi Heber, that you're talking about, that uh, of the problematic um, ingredients, right? There. Let's see if that works. So, right, th th these are the ones here: caramel, emulsifiers, gelatin, glycerin, and so on. Um, okay, so so these are these are the things that you're on the lookout for, and the flavors are not a problem. I mean, everything has flavors usually. Correct. I mean, look, yeah, everything the, the does. Liquid, the, the liquids and the chewables. And why are the flavors not a problem? So halachically, we say the, the flavor amount is bottled with shisha. There is a concept when something is a video timer, when it's used for taste, it's a problem. But the odds of something causing this to become us or because of a video timer are so slim. And it's here, it's for a fool, you could be leaning. We get a lot of so questions of great flavors. Great grape flavors are usually yeah, yeah. Grape grape is artificial because they're not Correct. spending the money to make a natural grape. Correct. So that's no different than the other flavors. So when you buy a food product and you see flavors in it, that's a red flag because you're eating it. You should exactly. you should be strict it's about it. But if you're right. taking a medication, we, there are policies that we're not we're not Sometimes worried about. Sometimes they get about a grape flavor, and I say, well, the grape flavor is not a problem, but there's another ingredient in there that might be a problem. <laughs> so that okay, happens. right. So, um, right. So let's take one of the questions here. Are there the same dinim, the same laws when it comes to vitamins? Right, so vitamins work in a similar manner in depends on why you're taking the vitamin. If the person's a chayla and they, and they need to take the vitamin, let's say a woman who's expecting it, she's on a prenatal, she's on a prenatal vitamin, 
So that would be considered a chayla. We advise buying a kosher version. But if it's not available, then you could swallow something which is not kosher because, again, it fits into that guideline of shalikadachachila that you're taking as a, as a, in a medicinal way where you're, it's unavailable or you can't get a substitute for this. What, what's the kosher. prenatals that are kosher? Are there any prenatals? That was oh, we have that on our list in our OBGYN article. Uh, and by the way, I should note the medicine was we are in the, we have the process of updating uh, that. I've written out the, the corrections, and we have a new one up for 2014. It's you'll see in there updated. There are corrections that are going in uh -huh. as soon as IT uh, uh, gets it up. We will have that on online um, with the updates. We do have an OBGYN article as well, which needs to be updated. Uh, but in there, it will list the prenatals which are kosher. So are there any offhand? I think in the nest tabs. Um, is kosher. One of them stopped. They stopped making one of them. Um, I don't want to say after cuff. You look it up. I see. Oh, look it up. Okay. I mean, people, can up, especially the, we can look it up. Yeah. Maybe uh, uh, our tech will look up which are uh, the prenatals. OBGYN article. In the OBGYN, which which are the um, are the prenatals that are okay? I mean, that, that's something that the women generally want to be strict about because correct. It's an that's unborn right. baby. That's how you it right. Correct. That's how you should get the right one. But that's just an example of a chayla. Someone's weak. So people have you know problems and so. When on. you have a multivitamin. And those 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 you should buy, those, those kosher. You should buy kosher, right? Absolutely, and they're because very often trafe. And I have I get calls. The vitamin E is, is this, this multivitamin kosher? I really have no way of knowing that by hearing the ingredients because the, certain vitamin components, vitamin A, vitamin E, are very often even D, but D is usually bottled. But vitamin A and E are spray dried into gelatin, and it, well, it's not a gelatin capsule. You're buying a pill. The pill has in it powder, and the powder has been mixed and compressed, and that powder. Sometimes there is a vitamin component which has been micro encapsulated. That means they take it and run it through a big spray dryer and it with gelatin, and it, it becomes little tiny gelatin capsules. Like you, you can't see it. it. To you, it looks like a powder, but if you put it under a magnifying glass, you'd be able to tell mm -hmm. that these are little, you know, tiny, tiny surround, you know, vitamins surrounded by gelatin, and then they stick it in your pill. Mm -hmm. So it's trait. So that by multivitamins, especially something like a Flintstones vitamin, which is chewable. That may be trafe. I don't know for sure, but there's a chance it is. Sometimes it'll say gelatin straight on the label. Sometimes it won't, but you really should not be using vitamins, uh, certainly chewable multivitamins without a hechsher. Mm -hmm. So that should be. You know, you can swallow and that. They're, they're, they're available. They are absolutely. Available. absolutely. Yeah. There is uh, a certified company. We have Shackle right. Vitamins. They make a multivitamin. Let's give a plug for our other, of course, our The rest of the plug, if you go to the rest of the list, you'll see. Uh, you'll Shackley. See Shackley. Shackley. Uh, we have a company, Mel Luca. We have a company, Nature Sunshine. Also, um, that is actually I know available people, in Eretz Yisrael under, under right. Kamat Teva. People in Israel, they, they, they exactly. buy the Shackley, don't they? Aren't there distributors for Shackley? Yeah, that is really in America. I don't it's know if they have distribution oh, in Israel. Some Amway, this, Amway, uh -huh. Neutralite, you know, X Business Group. That's another company. And the rest of the entire list is on our on our website. Mm -hmm. You can see in the medicine article that we, that we put so in. So if you have a, uh, a gelatin capsule, right? You have a gelatin capsule that... Um, that's a problem to take. That's an issue, right? Mm -hmm. So you look for a veggie cap. Correct. Okay. Let's say it's, let's say the only problem in the in the medicine or vitamin is the veggie cap. Can you rely on the fact that the company says they use yes vegetable? Yes. If it's a veggie cap, you cannot replace a veggie cap with a gelatin capsule. You'll know there's no way that would be you can get okay. the company would get in big trouble okay. for that. So that if it says veggie cap, it's it's relevant in our factories too how we treat. Uh, we only look caps. for them. We only accept them with a hefsher. That's correct. But but you know, for an individual who's out there you on the market, consume it's not a consumer can assume that it, that, that it's okay. Koshervitamins.com, by the way, also I see. I was thinking this. Someone right wrote that in. That what? Also has a um, uh, has a lot of vitamins that are kosher. Uh -huh. There was there was uh, I once I once heard from a Heinemann a way of if you have one of these capsules that's that's a problematic. So you can sometimes you can open it and take out the medicine and take it in, in the apple sauce. That depends on you know whatever the right. pharmacist or doctor says. But w another thing you can do is buy veggie caps that are larger than than the, the than the um, uh, medicine you want to take and put it into into that. Well, that's still shlokeh. Like Machloek is whether that's called shlokeh. Like right. Right. It's, it's, it's adding another it's an layer. layer. Right. That's if you get unscrewed and dump the contents in. No, you don't have cap. to dump the contents in. No, but by doing that, if the contents are kosher, then it's 100% kosher. Oh, if you can unscrew it and dump right, the contents. Correct. But even if you can't, you can just fit it well, sometimes it into, into a it larger... It a better selector. Right, it's a, little, it's a little bit of an advantage. Okay, let's take some of these uh, questions. 
Um, I see Rick and Columbus. Let's give them because I have no Kamara there. On <laughs> they were very hospitable after stopping the coil in Columbus. In Columbus. Oh, Rick in Columbus has been with us for years. Okay, well, I'm not sure who he is. Well, we've not, never we met him. We the coil and we we was for a little right, of learning. I told him over they're learning Bechiris. I told him uh, Kolesky has a shtickle on Bechiris. Uh, okay. And uh, then, then I went to David Nechemarev, and then I continued on to, uh, to Baltimore. Okay, anyone have any word on Centrum? Is it Centrum? Centrum, I think, might be Trafe, actually. I think if you look on the label, it says gelatin on, on even mm -hmm. the pills. If I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, then you still have to have to assume that there's a good chance that the components contain gelatin. Like and the vitamin E, like you mentioned before. Right. Exactly. So I would not, I would not uh, you know, use that. Okay, uh, Chaim, must, must one stay away from gel caps if I don't know if they're veggie caps? You'll know, you know, if it doesn't say anything on the label, you could assume it's a gelatin capsule. If it's a veggie capsule, they will tell you. Veggie cap, vegetable base cap, cellulose base cap, you, you'll know it from the label. Stam capsules are trafe. Mm -hmm. I see, okay. Um, we had some questions that came in by email, and, and I want to tell the listeners that in case, uh, in the future, for future webinars, if you want to, Get a question uh, discussed, and you can email us. The email address, I don't know it offhand, but it's on the uh, alert that we send out about these webinars. Uh, let's take some of these questions here. Here, if an adult who cannot swallow pills was recommended glucosamine and chondroitin for arthritis, what do you advise? Let's talk a little about, that's a good segue into glucosamine and chondroitin and those types okay, of... Okay, so, uh, so we have, um, we have actually an article on it. It's called uh, seashells. She sells no, she she sells okay. seashells, but are they kosher? Okay. Okay, because glucosamine is typically made from shark cartilage or from, from fish from um, fi you know non kosher right. uh, fish. Also on our website it says exactly uh, the type of it, it comes from non kosher fish sources. Okay. Um, so it's not kosher. No, it's not kosher glucosamine. Uh, chondroitin com comes from bovine trachea, better known as the necks of cows, um, okay. which are, again, not shechted, you know, the necks that are unshechted necks. So it's something <laughs> that could <laughs> be kosher, <laughs> but it, no one ever makes No one ever made chondroitin. chondroitin no one all chondroitin is trafe. There's no, it's never, you can make kosher. No one's ever, um, anyone want to open a business, maybe they could give it a shot. But, uh, <laughs> but for now, it's not available. Glucosamine is all trafe, except they, maybe 10 years ago or so, maybe less, eight, seven, eight years ago, they started making glucosamine from, a, a corn derivative, uh -huh. and a bunch of companies, uh, um, you know, started also making it. So now they sell that, and they'll tell you if it says kosher glucosamine, then that means it's coming so which, from which corn base. Which companies make? Uh, make I mean, the made, ADM is the big um, okay. manufacturer, or was it ADM or Cargill maybe? Cargill was made. made Cargill. I mean, yeah. Cargill made one that was kosher. Um, I think it was called. Um, Reagan sure might confuse. I'm not sure. So, so if so you go on, let's say you go on kosher vitamins, you, right, you can't you can't buy from Cargo straight the consumer, but right. your companies that have bought it, like yeah, koshervitamins.com, will, will sell it and they they list it as as a glucosamine and the, and from a kosher source. For, for, for Actually, we have a company, Life Science, in Lakewood, New Jersey, that also makes it. Mm -hmm. You know, buy, they're buying it. Can't tell you who they're buying it from, but they're buying a kosher source of a glucosamine. And what's that and, called? And that product? It's Life Science. It's a glucosamine product, and that's kosher as well. Um, but the chondroitin, you can't get kosher. Chondroitin, you can't get kosher. So what if the doctor recommends that for arthritis, they take glucosamine and chondroitin? Right, so then just buy one pill together. that comes in one and just take it all. That's, it's a one pill anyway, so just take it all. But if, if you, you just need glucosamine, then try the kosher one with a good asher, uh -huh. and you're getting the corn base. Which one works? Well, I, I don't know about anything that works. I just, that's not <laughs> I know, my job. Okay, I so worry about what works. I would, you know. <laughs> Okay, so th th this person is asking they cannot swallow pills. Obviously, when you swallow a pill, that's more of a halakhically uh, uh, recommended because you're not eating it. So they want to take glucosamine and chondroitin, I guess, in a liquid. I don't know exactly how yeah, they want to Yeah, there's no option. If you don't swallow, there's no way you can take chondroitin. What about glucosamine? Glucosamine, buy the kosher version. Buy maybe, maybe make it chewable. I don't know. In, in a chewable? A liquid? A uh, liquid. I don't, I don't know if that's available. It sh there's no reason why it should be available. Because the active ingredient just. Right. I, I, I'm, I'm guessing from the question that they have some liquid glucosamine and chondroitin. Yeah, I would That's not really that. not, not do that? No, okay, no. we don't. Not a good idea. Okay, sorry, we don't have an answer for that. Um, let's take another another question here that came in. Can an adult take. Oh, no, let's talk a little bit about Shabbos. They want to bring us to taking medications on Shabbos, which is 
um, uh, prohibited for uh, for uh, a mechush, something which is not a real, a person is not really sick, they're not allowed to take medication on Shabbos. So the question here is, can an adult take Ritalin or other ADD medication on Shabbos? Okay, so let's talk about a little about Shabbos. Shabbos, there's a Gzair of Chazal, that a person who has, all, has a mechush, which means a discomfort, is not supposed to take medicine on Shabbos. Um, even though, but, but if a person is a chayla, whether if he has a sakana, of course he can take medicine. If he is, if he's a chayla she'en by sakana, that means he belongs, laid up in bed, or belongs in bed, feels like he belongs in bed, then the halacha is, he's allowed to take something shalai kadar chayla in an abnormal manner. Oh, I'm sorry, no, no, I'm confused. No, no, scratch that from the record. He's allowed to take it, period. In other words, a, a chayla she'en by sakana is allowed to take medicine on Shabbos, period. Correct. So if you have a flu, you could take uh, whatever you need. You know, to get you better. If a person has a mechush, again, a runny nose, a sore throat, a minor headache, that's not going to lead to, you know, bad headaches, mm-hmm. but just a regular, you run on the mill, you know, then you're not allowed to take medicine. You might come to grind the herbs in making the medicine. And, and this, is a, this applies nowadays, even though most people don't grind herbs to make medicine, they buy it in the store, but the gzera still is in effect, and therefore you're not allowed to take that medication. And not only medicine, you can't even gargle salt, salt water if you have right. a sore throat. It's not, not necessarily a pill that you're, that you're swallowing or, or, or chewing. So now let's get to the question here. Taking Ritalin. Yeah. Ritalin, I would venture to guess if a person is unable to, you know, he, he has certain um, um, inability, he becomes in, in, in concentration and he becomes, you know, tense, either tense from it or he becomes overactive from it and he's just moody and you know, in, inappropriate and improper in his actions, then I think that would be considered a chayla, and you'd be allowed to take it. There's also a leniency if he's taking it every day. There is like, such a, a such a terrible in that, uh, that have certain guidelines of the question. The question would be, I guess, for this person is, does he take it once a day or more than once? Any, 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 I think we should point out, almost most medications that are taken once a day, you can really avoid taking them on Shabbos by taking the Friday Correct. afternoon. Right. And then taking but it. Riddle in the, something, I mean, say in the morning. Riddle, riddle in will be in the morning? I think so, because it's something that helps your activity during okay. that day. I, okay. I'm not an expert, but. There are also, some, there are also some other medications that have to be, be taken at a specific Correct. time of day. Right. So you don't have that. The other thing is, Yant of Shani, we're, we're lenient with this Allah. Second day of Yant right. Second day of Yant right. So that helps, because, like you say, you take it once a day. So if Yant is Thursday, Friday, except for Shana, you don't have the center. But if regular, let's say uh, Pesach is uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. So very simple. You can take it Monday. You can take it Tuesday night, which is the second night of Yom Tov. Mm-hmm. And, and now you, you know, and then you can take it, you know, if it's Friday, Thursday, Friday, you can take it Wednesday night. Right. You can take it Thursday afternoon. You can take it, no, no, no. You can take it Wednesday afternoon. You can take it Thursday night, which is the second night of Yom Tov. Right. You can take it Friday afternoon. Um, you'll have that in Pesach in uh, 2015. <laughs> this year it's Tuesday, Wednesday. When you actually, said it first. Well, that's Pesach, but, okay. but, but you have the Sukkot, you have Thursday, Friday, this oh, coming okay, year. Fine, right. So that you'll have this Hatter. Rosh Hashanah, though, you don't have that Yom Tov Sheni Hatter. I see. Okay, so is there any hal- advantage halach with mixing it into food on Shabbos? Mm. On Shabbos, that's what Pasha. There's a Machlech on Paiskim, whether or not you're allowed to mix medicine before Shabbos and take it. There's a truth from Maisha who's Machber. Um, which I've heard, I once spoke over a Paisik that told me you know, we're, we're Machmer. In that case, there are Dela Paisik who are Makel in this halacha. Right. One should consult with their local Rav to be able to mix right. before Shabbos. Shemir Shabbos Kachas, it brings down the leniencies. So yes. I, think it became, yeah. I think it became popular. Um, let's take a look at, at some of the questions, make sure we try to get as many as we can. Um, let's see. What about if it says natural grape flavor? Yeah, I think that's... Uh, if it says so natural gla- grape flavor... It means it has natural added. ingredients, but somehow they finagle the grape to make it taste grape. I'm not worried. It's just natural ingredients. It's not real grape. Usually not. I see. Okay. It's natural ingredients that come from Natural grape. ingredients... The word natural and bla- artificial, they play around with... Like, I see. It's, it's so... It doesn't tell you anything. Okay. Um, do we need to be concerned with hummus... Shavar Allah al Pesach with medicine. So not that, not unless it's an edible like that a pills. Means, like, right, that means if you have uh, um, some chametz in your medication, would there be a problem after uh, if, it wasn't sold. if it wasn't sold? If the chametz medications weren't sold, would there be a problem? The answer is no, unless it's maybe like like a fiber, a bed of fiber it comes from wheat dextrin. It's a container of wheat, straight away wheat. So something that's blatantly chametz 
and it's not a pill form, but it's a powder form, and it's the real deal, that's you have to be concerned. But any pills or capsules or, or liquids um, that are just medicines, you do not have to be concerned. You don't have to be concerned. Um, and lest you think that that question is, uh, is you, know, you know, nothing to do with what's going on today, because it's not Pesach. Here in the Starkey office, we are heavily into Very much so. getting into ready it's for Pesach. Right. We're ready. We're ready. Uh, Way you know, because for us, remember the days uh, in high school where the Liber yard was long winter, <laughs> right. and like Pesach seemed like months and months away. Came right. and Shvat, and you had Shvat other Rishon other Shani. Pachshem learning was great, but it was long, and it, it was a uh, kind of little homesick there in the in the far off lands. We went away for high school. Now Liber are great because you got more time to prepare. Right. Right. Pesach, which we prepare, we prepare Pesach pretty much all year, uh, not so much in the summer, but. We're, we're working on it. Um, is it better to buy the medicines on the list? Can I buy generic, cheaper meds? Do I need to check each thing with the NIH? Again, it depends. depends on your status of, of how much of a you are. Prescriptions, you don't have to check. Prescription items, we, 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 we really go back to the beginning of the conversation when we spoke okay. about looking up medicines at NIH. We do want to really remind them and say this. If a person has, a, has an antibiotic for an infection, you do not have to check anything. You can take generic, you can take regular, because first of all, his life is in danger. It could be, even, danger. And even though it could be, you're not, you're not, if you have something that works, I mean, the doctor gives you a choice between a pill and a gel cap, take the pill. But whatever you got, take it. Don't, don't, don't mess around with it. So when, we, so when are we looking at the NIH? So like, no, someone's a chal, uh, for, chal shame, a for something simple, right? Or Pesach. I use it more Pesach than during the year. I see. Or, or for an over the counter. So for an anti, oh, over the counters are there too? Yes. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, okay. But over the counter, it has it on on the box usually. Yes. Does it have more information on the NIH than it's on the box? Um, no, no, usually not. No. Yes, you're right. The truth I end up in the okay, NIH. So the NIH mainly is pesos. Is mainly for pesos. So the person uh, has a has. Or it just has a mask. He has a, he has something I don't know for um, acne, which is not a chayla. I see. So then he would want to look it up. But generally, for prescriptions, you should just take it. Yes. Okay. Fine. Um, I've been having problems in the last few years getting children's acetaminophen and ibuprofen liquid. What's the situation with these? That's an excellent I question. I think they mean, you mean if you're getting children's kosher. Right. This is a big problem. Um, McNeil used to have it readily available. The, the latest information we have, which unfortunately is difficult to be updated, is that the, the Motrin berry for kids and the Tylenol um, um, no, Motrin cherry. I'm sorry, Motrin. Uh, no. Motrin berry, Tylenol cherry. For kids. Both good. Right? Oh, both other, okay. Even though they're liquids. And, and you'll find that on our website. There's a whole reason why that's not on the website. But so you're getting the inside scoop here. Right, exactly. Okay, that, the, the problem in them is the glycerin, is that right? Correct. So okay, a, and so we have information that that glycerin is kosher. Correct, right. We try to update it, but it's not so easy to update. But the, our latest information is. is uh -huh. that. And if a person wants to buy, is there a kosher brand of kids' medication like that? Advocate um, who makes kosher. Yeah, I'm not so familiar. And we might have, I mean, there was a period where. Try Minnick. Try Minnick, but it's not, not, that's so not, available. That's it's not around there. Yeah. I see. Or it's not so readily available. Okay. For patients with either uh, macular degeneration or glaucoma. Akivite. So Akivite was, was actually, lutein. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, I, I think from the information that I have uh, was that that Akivite may contain non kosher ingredients. Mm -hmm. Uh, some of the you know, things we spoke about with the vitamins, but somebody that potentially could be, have macular degeneration, that's considered a chayla, a chayla is not to take some chayla in an abnormal manner, and therefore it's permissible to swallow that, that mm -hmm. if that's necessary. Take an antistral, they, they make one kosher, a similar Akivite product. Oh, really? If you're an antistral, you can get hold of that. That's certainly better because making a kosher. It's not the lutein that's the problem. That's not, that's not. It could be actually, lutein sometimes could also go into, uh, into gelatin. But the lutein itself, we actually certify lutein from the base okay. on up. I think that's not a problem. Mm -hmm. But except the gelatin problem. By the way, when you're looking at a at a prescription, uh, you're looking at an over-the-counter medicine, you will find that it's an alphabetical order the ingredients. Unlike food, right. which is an right. order important. of amounts. Very right. important because you see triestin at the end, and you say, "Oh boy, there's not much in there." And oh, the reason right. it's at the end is because it starts with a T, and everything right. else starts with. So you can't know that. You can't even get from 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 the NIH, right? Percentages you can't, you can't get percentages. Yeah. Right. So if you see it in the alphabetical order, you can't go by the Correct. order of ingredients. Right. What about there was I want to ask you about Heber. There was an article um, 
that was circulating. I, I saw that I, I had printed out somewhere um, that the that the ingredients in um, vitamins and homeopathic medications are not accurate. That they did some studies and some tests. The government did, and they found that a huge percentage were just missing or just not accurate in those that come from China, and they don't really. Uh, so what happened? The, the ingredients that were on the label did not match what was in the product oh, really? of, no. of, of, the, of the homeopathic and the. Yeah, that's. So you definitely want to get something that's you know reliable, reputable, absolutely yeah, reputable. You have to be careful. But we're still relying. We're still, for our lawful purposes, relying on the labels. Yes. That's about uh, in line. drugs, in American drugs. There's not much wiggle room. No, these are not drugs. These are these are like oh, health. Yeah, 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 health, yeah. Health, health, uh, yeah. That's open open market. It's, it's the wild well, west. We still read the ingredients. It's Dodge, in, Dodge in Kansas. Right, but we still read the ingredients. Saying, right, right. We have no choice. Yeah. What? Yeah. Okay. Ellie says our pharmacy, Sanyu, and that's in Baltimore, t sells empty gel caps. He means uh, veggie caps. Right. Correct. We discussed that that the person can put his medicine swallow that. We discussed that that, that there is some advantage to that. Uh, Rick is asking, what about a multivitamin recommended by a physician? So again, it would depend why. It depend why. You know, sometimes you go in and they just say, oh, you know, it's just, some some doctors just say take it. There's no deficiency. Just it's a good idea. Supplement your supplement your diet. So then that's that's nothing. If a person has a problem, it needs so a particular right. multivitamin. Correct. But and if why do I need this one exactly? What about a different one? Um, you know, so. You want, to, you want to determine why you, need, you do need a specific one. Uh, homeopathic, that's asked. Um, well, I'm sorry, I'm going to jump. What's that? No, homeopathic. Those what was the question? Often bottled. Are in homeopathic meds bottled? Very often they are. Yeah, null, bottled means nullified. Right? I thought they Correct. have minuscule amounts of medicine mixed into plain water. All right, but those okay. medicinal amounts are usually bottled by LF. It says any, if it says number 2C, which is a percentage, 2C, 3C, 4C, 5C, that means it's one in, um, you know, like, one hundred. Right, but the the other ingredients so are, not, are not are not usually they're kosher. They usually kosher. Lactose I you can assume is kosher. Alcohol you can assume is kosher. I see. Okay. Look at the article. Mm -hmm. Right, right. They are not um, homeopathic. Of course, is a different thing. The mm -hmm. supplements are vitamins items. Homeopathic is a different, right? A whole different. Uh, it's a whole different topic. Concept. A whole different idea. There were a few of the the listeners are pointing out the uh, what I was mentioning the dangers of. Um, of the uh, supplement, it's not, it's not really what you get, not necessarily getting what you, uh, what it says on the label, so you have to be careful with that. Um, we did also wanted to talk uh, for a couple of minutes about the dairy medications. A lot of the medications, if you look on the list that, uh, that many, Rebbe, the many. Rebbe Hever has, a lot of them are dairy. So how does that affect? Question, you go to the OBGYN list, many, most things prescribed by an obstetrician are dairy. And why is that, Rebbe? <laughs> I'm not sure. It just That's works it with the medicine. I don't know. It works with the actives. I see. Okay. So what, what? What's um, the what's the halachic ramifications right. of dairy medication? So we say the first of chayla, they you only have to take, wait an hour after flashix. So if you need to take a milk item, wait an hour after flashix. Take it before okay. you swallow it. Um, if it's chewable, let's say a caramel, at least make a caramel with a hechsher on it that had some vitamin in it. That, that's already food. That, you know, don't take it after flashix. I see. But right, so so just wait an hour. And right. do you have any there that are, that have meat? No, there's a true no. for Maisha but iron. Iron, right, but there's you no. Have to wait. Then you just swallow it. I don't think that makes the flashix at all. Right. There's no. There isn't anything really, practically speaking, too right. much about that. Um, so the dairy, the dairy. Okay, so just wait an hour, and that's basically it. Right. Okay, Rabbi Harry, we've been uh, at it for for a little bit, and it's, we can uh, we can keep going for another another sure. another few hours. But um, all good things have to come to an end. Rafua comes to the bar shalom. That's where for end was the eighth bracha. Right. Mila. Of course, that's what Mar Megillah says. Right. It's a meal of the Bar Shalom heals. So the Bar Shalom does One last vart. Go ahead. One, one more vart. Go ahead. Rapa, you rapa. I'm not a big diktuk person. I don't know uh, well, but some diktuk ones. There's a dog ish of a rapo. You rapa. But when you damage my nest, you refa. Inu Hashem. Right? There's okay. no dog ish. It's refa. Right. And yet, the rapo, you rapa, the doctor heals. Right? So the answer is that. That when it's whenever it's a dogish or dot, it's it's whenever it's a dogish, it's 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 chazak, it's strong, right? So a doctor has to work hard to heal. Of course, it's all through the bunch alone, but the rapo, it's lost of chazak, it's strong because he has to work hard at it. With for Ainu Hashem, the bunch alone is no dogish, it's very good. Very good. Um, 
Uh, thank you for joining our, our webinar. If you have any questions uh, on this topic or any other topic, you can reach us at 410-484-4110. And Rabbi Heber's private cell phone number, I'm not giving out. Uh, and, um, or you can email us at info at star-k.org, info at star-k.org. And, uh, well, of course, we have our websites. Uh, star-k.org and it has a lot of a lot of, of this information in, 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 um, in article form. What are you showing me? Right lactose right? is usually milk. That's what we said things are dairy. Right. right. Lactose milk is, is usually milk. the ingredient in the medication that is that is milk. Right. Um, and uh, we look forward to if you would be uh, joining us next month or the month after that on our special bug webinar, how to check for bugs, what to look for, what they look like, and and how to find them. Thanks very much for joining us. Have a great day. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.